Uh, uh, I've got an EpiPen because I'm allergic to bee and wasp stings. Oh, so, uh, so I, have, but I, I never have it on me. I haven't got it on me now. Mm. It's, in the, it's in the cupboard in the kitchen at home. So, uh, so it's, uh, they always said that <laughs> the guy, when they gave me the EpiPen, they said, you'll never need to use it. You don't put it in. He said, because if you can put it in, it's not a bad enough reaction. Oh, really? If someone else puts it in, right. then, then yeah. you know, that's what you've got to <gasps> look out for. So the EpiPen, one thing that you'll be given if you find out that you've got an action, but, uh, uh, a reaction. But there are allergies and there are intolerances. And the, these are two areas that you've got to make sure you don't mix them up. Yeah, that's right. It's a very controversial area of medicine, especially when you get to food intolerances. Now, food allergies are, are fairly obvious. You know, they come on rapidly, soon after yes. your know, contact with the, the, the substance, the, the allergen. So it's very obvious to a non-medical person that this person is reacting. They have obvious symptoms. So it's a rapid onset, easy to diagnose, and, um, uh, and of course, medically we can do blood tests. We can measure specific antibodies produced by the immune system called IgE antibodies, and we do other tests like the skin prick, yes, prick test. Yes, it's a good test. It, you know, the GP did it in the surgery, it, it caused a big reaction mm. with the, the, the peanut um, liquid, uh, and there we are, you have the diagnosis. The food intolerance, uh, it's, um, it, it comes on more slowly. You don't suddenly get a severe reaction like this. And, and therefore, it's more difficult to diagnose. You may be allergic to not just one specific substance, but several in a food group. Uh, it's never life-threatening. An allergy can be life-threatening with anaphylaxis, where the patient collapses, they're in shock, low blood pressure, and they've, they've got the, you know, yeah. the, the itchy red rash, the hives, they could be wheezing, you know, short of breath, face swollen, lips swollen, See, tongue swollen. Talk, just talk us through, uh, talk us through the things you've, you've got here. Jago, Jago, Jago. Jago. Just have a look. <laughs> come, look come, come down here, come play with your car with me. Come over here, play with your car with me. Your car. Go on. Let's have a look. Come on, let's, can I have a look at your car? Oh, no, no, he's shy. Shy. no, he's shy. No, he's shy. He's going to play cars. This is a great floor to play cars on. Let me tell you, see how far it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to play cars. And what if he knows you have an allergy? He doesn't want to go near yeah. you. I just want to play cars. <laughs> A couple of testing kits. This is a self-testing kit for food intolerance. These kits are not tests for food allergies, for food intolerance. This one, the York test, that will test for about 113, but you send that off to the lab. So you actually, you, you take a little pinprick yourself. Actually, I did this one about four years ago, just out of interest. And it's, I mean, you won't even see the needle. It's so fine. It's a tiny needle into the side of the finger, uh, a blood sample is collected on a little stick like that and then you pop it in the box and send it off to them. Now this is what four or five years ago and my results came back showing that I was intolerant of wheat which I ignored. <laughs> Too busy, I, you know, blah blah blah. And of course two years ago uh, I, I had symptoms that were quite troublesome and I was diagnosed with celiac disease whereby I'm reacting not just to wheat but barley and rye but it's the gluten in the wheat, barley and rye that's causing it. So the, the test actually picked it up and I ignored it. Mm. Right. Foolish, you know. Uh, and the interesting thing with, with peanut allergies, I mean, th there is some good news. Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge have been doing some research on children allergic <laughs> to peanuts and they've been exposing them to tiny amounts. They start with one four hundredth of a peanut and expose the child to that and gradually increase the, the level of exposure. And after months, maybe six months, uh, they had children sort of eating six full peanuts a day who had a severe peanut allergy and the symptoms weren't there. So, so there's still lots of research going on into it. Yeah. Yes, but, but you, you, you think they're going to Addenbrooke, aren't you? Well, I mean, I would love to. I think they're quite selective trials, and, um, but we're all very hopeful about it because they've had some amazing results, actually, yeah. of de sort of gradual desensitisation. Um, and I'm sort of hoping, actually, that by the time he's a teen, that there will be some, mm. something that we can, you know, at least sort of bring down his... His reactions, so it's oh, less of a sort of. Hey, that's a good one. <laughs> told you, you could, be, you could have been doing that for five minutes. <laughs> See, I told you it was a great floor. Ready? There you go. Way. Look at that. <laughs> See? Go on, do it yourself on that floor. Trust me when I say this is a good floor for cars. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you mention the app? Just yeah, finally yeah, mentioned the app. Yeah, there's an app out called Is It In It? Uh, and and you, you get this free for about three weeks. And what you do is you, you, you give them information online to what you are allergic to. And then the app works in, in this way. You, you, you go into the supermarket and you, you cast this over the, the barcode. And the app will tell you if the peanuts are in there See, or other great. nut derivatives. Uh, or whatever your allergies are, it's a you know 
alerting you to you know, avoid that food. They should say, though, shouldn't they, on the packs? Usually they have a kind of warning that there's... They do. I mean, the packaging can be quite confusing in the sense they often say it may contain nuts. Right. And there's that goes on so many things. Often, as a parent, you have to make a call, you know, how, you know, how likely is it? Um, and uh, I, mean, I wouldn't let anyone else give them something that may contain nuts, but I would make the call myself. Yes. Otherwise, wouldn't he really have anything? Yeah, sure. Everything would have to be home-baked. Yeah. Um, and you have to watch for uh, uh, arachis oil? Yes, that's another. So they sort of sneak them in. Don't, yeah, arachis oil is one of the, is peanut oil, um, but you wouldn't necessarily know you unless you have a PhD in chemistry. Oh my goodness! Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and um, egg, of course, is another one where it comes. Thank into you yeah. both Welcome. for coming. <laughs> <in>. Very <laughs> much. Thank yes. you, uh, Dr. Chris. Thank you very much. Indeed. Jago, thank yes. you very much indeed. Jago, thank, thank you. you. That, that's that's so you've been most amusing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I've got to say that too. I didn't realise how bouncy, how bouncy it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. very bouncy. I haven't actually tried to slide off it. That looks like a good game as well. For more information on anything that we've just been talking about, have a look. On our website, itv.com forward slash this morning for details.